I love to walk with the trees They're arching their backs and they're bending their knees I'd heard about hackberry trees, but never encountered any until I saw one on a college campus with an identification tag. It's not common where I live, so I was pleased to find this growing nearby. I probably walked by it many times until I saw berries on it and wondered if they were edible. Perhaps this tree may be overlooked because of its unappealing name, hackberry which makes me think of those slasher movies. Maybe Sweet Tree is better? Or I could call it by its scientific name, Celtus. But viewers in Massachusetts, where I live, might think I'm talking about the Celtics, our beloved basketball team. This native deciduous tree can grow up to 60 feet or more and prefers moist alluvial soils. Its gray bark is distinctive with deep ridges. In some places, it looks like it's been hacked with an axe to make deep canyons. Maybe this is a reason for the hackberry name. If you're lucky, you'll see an emperor butterfly resting on the bark. Twigs are thin and brownish with little spots along their length. Some of these trees have many bushy growths on their branches. They resemble little nests but since birds aren't nesting yet, there's another explanation. These are commonly called witch's broom and are an infection caused by a combination of mites and a fungus. They look unappealing, but don't cause any damage. When leaves emerge, they're three to six inches long and grow alternately along the stem. They feel somewhat rough and their bottoms are often asymmetrical. They're light green and turn yellow in the fall. A good way to identify them is that many are covered by a gall of an insect. These look ugly, but don't harm the tree. Tiny inconspicuous male and female flowers appear on the same tree. Their fruits have been used all over the world for many years. In early June, young ones are dark green, although here they look black, but they're not. These ripen in September, when they turn reddish-purple, brown, or darken to black. Because so many are found way high up, I make do with what's on the lower branches, as I'm too old to climb these trees. I don't feel bad about gathering them, because many remain near the top of the trees for birds and squirrels. You can tell something's been gnawing at these fallen fruits. Supposedly they stay on this tree over winter, but that's not likely around here, as animals usually get them first. Individual fruits hang on long stems instead of in clusters. They're round with smooth skins and look like peas. A single pit with a hard shell occupies the most space. Fruits have a thin, dry skin with a small amount of sweet pulp, which is somewhat dry. What's there is delicious and tastes like a New England version of dates. If only these fruits were larger. I wish there was more pulp. Berries aren't soft or juicy. They can be stored for a long time since they're hard and dry. As with many fruits, taste varies from tree to tree. But I have to be content with what I can gather from the few trees I've found. Surprisingly, the interior pit has an edible white kernel, which can be picked out. It's a lesson in frustration. Some sources say to put the whole fruit into your mouth and chew. Uh-uh, no. I certainly wouldn't do that with the ones I've found. The pits are hard, and there's no way I'm going to take the chance of breaking a tooth. I won't use my blender as the blades might be damaged by the very tough seeds. Instead, what I do is place the berries on a clean cloth, cover them, and smash them with a hammer. So both outer coverings and inner pits are in tiny pieces. I use these to make this tasty juice. Put them in a pan, add one cup water, 
Simmer for 20 minutes. Press with a masher. Let cool and separate the liquid from the solid leftovers. Push down to release any excess water. The result? A really sweet drink. No sugar needed. This makes a good topping to mix into yogurt or ice cream. If there's any excess juice, place it in ice cube trays in the freezer to use later. This process may seem like a lot of work to get minimal results. Often it's simpler to chew on the outside covering and spit out the pit. But when I feel more patient, I prepare this beverage. The taste is worth it. I wonder if there are any hackberry trees with larger fruits. Perhaps you have some that produce better harvests than the ones I found. Maybe someday I'll find fruits with more meat on them. Guess that's just wishful thinking. I love to walk with the trees.